to sit in with all of that then lee the question where i, I normally start to take it towards marketing a little bit more is what is the the one thing that you would hold on to for if you were to start a new business again you were to give yourself some advice maybe 10 15 years ago the one thing that you've learned over the last while it could be a tool it could be a marketing strategy it could be something that you've experienced what's the one thing you wish you did more of to help your marketing previously that's a really good question i to be honest i think the one thing that i if i was going to do it again is if you think something's going to take three years it's more likely going to take four or five or maybe even six so you just have to push through you whatever strategy whatever marketing strategy you employ stick with it and give it the time to test i think a lot of people on myself included certainly in my younger years if it wasn't happening quick enough i immediately didn't try something else it's because i didn't necessarily have the understanding or the experience to know that you do need to give these things to it and cash flow is key as well making sure that puts pressure on most people you think i've got a a small advertising budget, you put it in there. If it's not working within well, three weeks, four weeks, you scrap it and start something else. Only through experience do you learn that sometimes you might only have to go five weeks or six weeks and then you crack it. I'm not saying that's the case, that's the tipping point, but there is a tipping point. And sometimes the tendency is, particularly for entrepreneurs with a smaller budget, is to strip it and start something new before you reach that tipping point. So I've never started a business with investment. I've always bootstrapped everything. And you need, you need to have that one contract or that one client that keeps the doors open. Enough money to keep the lights. You yeah, that champion. And if you haven't got that champion, you got to make sure that you're well funded and, and buckling down and watching the pennies. And that's probably the takeaway for me. I don't. There is everybody searching for that secret recipe, that secret marketing mix. The fact is, it changes depending on you know, the product, the industry. There's so many variables. And unfortunately, you are going to waste money before you, you stumble on that success. For us, the success and the recipe for us was just banging down doors and giving it enough time for that reputation to grow. We had that one client. We provided them with an exceptional service. They told other people. So when we went and spoke to other people, you mm -hmm. might not pick that client up straight away, but you're in their mind. So when their current supplier does make a mistake, you're the first name on the list to call. We did double year on year in terms of revenue, but it wasn't easy. But you need that one client that allows you to keep the doors open and keep three years was that tipping point for us before. That reputation was established well enough so people started knocking on their doors. So you plot in, I, I listened to a really good audio book called From Impossible to uh, Inevitable. And it's about hyper growth companies and, and mainly such companies and some real gems in there. And one of them was the way that they'd spoke about the marketing mix. And it was about spears, nets, and seeds. So seeds are being the, what you're putting out there, allowing to grow. Spheres is your outbound sales and marketing mix is your marketing, marketing mix. And it, I think it's a really good way of thinking about it. It allows the non-marketing person to be able to think, oh, sphere, that's going on. Really and then that's what you're going to collect in. Seeds is what you're growing. And that was a really good thing. Uh, it, it's not a, anything really specific, but it's a good way to think about pictures if you're not a marketing professional. And if you are in it, you might not have enough money to, to employ a marketing manager. So you do need to know a little bit about it. I need to learn quickly. I think something I've certainly yeah. experienced over yeah. the last year of, of running my own business, 13 months in now, 14 months in, and I didn't really appreciate the amount of hats that I'd have to wear and master to get anywhere near successful. And I, and I don't claim to be successful yet. We're still on the journey, but... I figured oh, I'd start my own business yeah. and, and I'd be doing all the things that I envisage doing and it'd be lovely and life would be brilliant. And actually then you've got to balance and reconcile your finances and you've got to add, it, add receipts into your banking platform, your accounting platform and having conversations with accountants about why you've done it this way and that way. And as before you even get thought about social media and websites and all the rest of the amazing things that, that seem to be necessary yeah. to be able to have a robust strategy. I guess to come back to yeah. that, that question around the marketing for you, then what's something that you 
seeing a lot of people trying to do that is just maybe it's a myth in market and you don't believe it's real maybe it's something that you just wish people would stop doing because it doesn't work or maybe something that from experience you've tried and just really didn't work for you and why there's a lot of options there okay i think yeah uh, i'll go at the thing that I, I wish people would stop and i know it's not ai lead generation through linkedin is one that drives me getting spammed and i think what i've noticed is our business has become more successful Personally, I've become a target for sex people and I don't have a full-time PA. I have some of the people helping me on different aspects and consultants. I don't even see a lot of that. So the amount of emails and some of them are thankfully caught by spam, but the amount of emails on LinkedIn that are AI generated that I originally, you know, initially I started responding to and saying, no, thanks. It's not for us. Now I'll just delete them just because I just you know, purely simply the amount of them and all I get most of them are lead friends companies and oh, would you want more leads and all that sort of thing. I find that really irritating that and I do the iOS thing I find somewhat uncomfortable when we're in, immersing myself and jumping in the deep end really to just try and understand it because I do appreciate it is the way forward. But it does make me uncomfortable. I don't know, say from a security aspect, from protecting domain knowledge, to start putting it out there, you have to be really careful of who's going to see it and whether or not you're going to be putting raw data and expertise in the hands of competition. So that's something that's really uncomfortable from a perspective of what we've done 